Are you ready to meet her? Let's go. Some people call it the invisible disability, others just call it ASD, which means Autism Spectrum Disorder. At other times, it is simply referred to as autism. On this episode of Her Standards, we want to talk about this disorder, and joining me is none other than Margaret Kimani, who is an autism champion, but that's not all. She is an investment banking consultant and also an acclaimed author. We have lined up an exciting show for you. We are available at KTN Home across all social media on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. But you can also hit me up at Quinta Mbori on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, before I introduce my next guest, I just wanted to do a bit of housekeeping. We have received a lot of feedback based on the last uh, special series that we covered from Laikipia County. Wow. From the bottom of our hearts, we just want to say Asante Nisana. Thank you so much. Awesome. You never know. Keep the feedback coming. We might just land in a county next to you. Uh, thank you so much for those who've been writing to us, those who have been impacted by this show, and we just want to say Asante Sana. 45 minutes is all we have, and we hope that you can keep it here every Saturday as we bring to you stories about women and also discuss issues that affect us mm. directly. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Margaret Kimani. Thank you. Hi, Thank Maggie. you so much. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings Is it from morning? Machakos County. <laughs> <laughs> Machakos, Machakos County. It's actually yeah. evening, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. How are you? Good. Kumingi. Good. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the funny thing is, you know, you, when you meet people, you never quite know where... I, what they do. Yeah. Yes. What they do and where your destinations will meet. We because cross again. Exactly. Yeah. Because I thought, I never, when I met you in church, I didn't know that we'd meet again on set. Thanks to Grace. <laughs> <laughs> in case you're wondering who Grace is, she is a producer of the show. She's available <laughs> on social media and you, you can also engage her, especially if you want us to profile women around you or you, you, you feel like the topics that we need to discuss. Do not hesitate to contact Grace Waweru or, or also known as Gracie Wawesh on Instagram. So, uh, back to my guest for today who is none other than Margaret Kimani. Before we even talk about you know, the diagnosis of autism mm, mm. and about your daughter, who is, who by the way, I've met and is beautiful and talented. Yeah. Um, maybe because many of our viewers are probably meeting you for the first time. Sure. So I think the best thing to do is just to welcome them by telling us who Margaret is. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And mm. it's important. Yeah. So, um, uh, Alta Margaret Kimani. Uh, I go by that title <laughs> because it's something that I've... Uh, I've, I've procrastinated forever, yeah. uh, but I started authoring in 2010, 20, um, thanks to COVID. Yeah. Uh, it's a, one of those COVID kairos, uh, but I'm an investment banker by profession. What does that mean? Um, this means that, um, you know, in Kenya, they are the bankers, yeah? yeah. We yeah. bank, you come in, you open an account. Mm. Uh, we look out for strategies and, uh, you know, to bank you, we give you bank loans. That's not investment banking. Investment okay. banking is something I actually have been doing it for the last 21 years. Mm. Um, I also came across it um, by, it was God's plan to be honest. I left Kenya in 2001 mm. to go to America to study finance. Mm -hmm. But when I landed there, I realized, aha, uh -huh, mm. investment banking is far from it in Kenya. Mm. So I changed my, uh, you know, my studies and whatnot. And two months later, I ended up working for, um, because I landed in the Dean's List uh, at Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, so I was very privileged. When they came for the career day, I was picked by State Street Bank, one of the global, largest global custodian. And for me, what happened is that, uh, so my story is very long, but I've been an investment <laughs> banker since uh, now in State Street Bank. Yeah. In 20, wow, this year's have flown. In 2010, yeah. I had always a desire to come back home because um, some of you might not know, I'm also the founder of Duta Angels Foundation. Yeah. I lost my mother when I was in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, when I lost my mother and because also I studied finance because I wanted to bring it back home mm -hmm. I'm crazy about my country I love Kenya to pieces mm -hmm. uh, my parents my friends also don't understand my former <laughs> boss in State Street don't understand mm -hmm. so I resigned my big job mm -hmm. Uh, and came home. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to come back home in 2007, but you know what happened? Yeah. Uh, Kenya was the, the had this yeah. the worst post, post election uh, violence. Post, 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 post election, post election violence. violence. Yeah. So we watched on CNN, and I was like, "Yes, I'm mm. a risk taker, by the way, yeah. as you know, as yeah. you can tell. Yeah. I'm a risk taker, but I held off a bit. Okay. I still had a very good job. Mm -hmm. So in 2010, I was like, "This is it." Anyway, so I came back home um, and I've uh, been doing different things. So when I came back home, I wanted to start a consulting firm, still investment banking. But the former Chase Bank director, mm -hmm. Zaf Ruler, found me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they, it's usually known. Mm -hmm. Even the ambassadors, whenever they would, the government of Kenya, whenever they would send people to do diaspora investment conferences, I would be the go-to person. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very crazy about investment because I feel that I come from a very humble background. I'm from Gatanga, very proudly, somewhere <laughs> 40 minutes from Nairobi. And uh, because my parents were very poor, yeah. if I can use that word, mm. poor, mm. humble, mm. Uh, we were, I am a fourth born in a family of eight. Yeah. I never knew even, for example, savings. But I knew that my, par my dad is such a shrewd, he's like the Warren Buffett or Chris Kirubi, mm. of from like when my dad Gatanga. tells you buy, yeah. you don't even, you just shut up and buy. Yeah. You, you just remit the money and, yeah. and buy. Yeah. My returning to Kenya was obviously a blessing. So I, I, I'm crazy about in investing. So when I came back home anyway, fast forward, mm. uh, in 2010 when I came, Zaf requested me to start a diaspora department yeah. at the Chase Bank. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing banking since then, 2010. Uh, moved to different dockets. I'm very crazy about youth mentorship. I told you I come from a very rural area where my parents did not have education. Mm -hmm. So mentorship was like go to school, get the number one, two, do not bring the number three to <laughs> my house. Yeah. Otherwise, you're in a family of eight. You have a chance as a girl yeah. to be even kicked out, drop out of school. So anyway, <laughs> mentorship is a very big deal. So I'm a global youth mentor. Um, over the years, no, what has happened is that uh, last three years ago, 2018, yeah. when uh, uh, State Bank of Mauritius came to Kenya, I was seconded to move from my department to head the women banking and youth banking. I always carry the youth along because I know mentorship takes people far and even entrepreneurship, we're promoting entrepreneurship. Yeah. Anyway, fast forward, um, this year I've headed you women banking at State Street Bank, no, State Bank of Mauritius yeah. for the last three years, won very many awards. Uh, influence, my actually calling, we met in church, yeah. my calling <laughs> from God is actually influence. Mm. He has given me that as a gift mm. and I don't take it for granted. And you can see, you can actually connect the dots. Yeah. The reason God wanted me to resign a big job in Wall Street is because I have a serious influence. Mm -hmm. um, and my names, it's not about my names, it's, it's a gift from God. So the influence of God is that I'm able to advocate companies, I'm able to influence companies, uh, you know, to change certain policies that don't make sense. Um, inclusion is very close to me. I told yeah, you that I come from it. the rural area yeah. of Kenya proudly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, the village is what has made me. Mm -hmm. um, people don't understand it. In fact, every day, if I speak, like today I'm speaking at Kenya Power, uh, K KPLC, yeah. uh, in an inclusion forum yeah. where we are actually rallying them to open opportunities for our PWDs, our women, our youths. Um, and every time I speak somewhere or I meet people, they ask me, where did you come back home? Um, before um, I knew, before we knew that, because we knew our daughter was yeah. autistic. Yeah. We've been knowing, I think along the way we are learning, mm. we don't also understand this autism, mm. but I feel that God, the reason I, in my opinion, humble opinion, I feel that God, because God given, has given me a very big voice for the voiceless, I feel that God had to kind of uh, give us a baby who was autistic, though you can't tell, mm -hmm. I, I think you've met her, you mm -hmm. can't tell mm -hmm. that she's autistic because I have a voice so that I could use my voice for the voiceless. And I'll give you an example. In my estate we have, I will not say for purposes of privacy, yeah. we, I found that one of the doctors, very serious doctor, uh, they actually come from West Africa, um, I found that, uh, you know, they, they have an autistic I wouldn't know whether it's autistic, some condition, dis in, invisible disability. Yeah. And when you think about it, a doctor has all these facilities, mm. right? Mm. Uh, if you think about, I'm talking in the capital city of Nairobi. What about somebody in Pokot? Yeah. 
Mm. What about somebody in Bug Bugoma? It's very there are many parents mm. who are very well educated. I've gone, I actually have very good uh, relationships with ambassadors. I've gone to one of the ambassadors, former ambassadors home mm. here in Nairobi. Mm. And I remember one of the things I noticed is that they have a kid in a wheelchair. They look like a kid, but it must be a teenager. Mm. It must be like a mini, maybe 23, mm. from what I could judge. Yeah. They have a person with, a, they have a child who has a physical disability, mm. and I can guarantee you they don't take them out. Maybe the doctor comes to the house, yeah. the trainer comes to the house, mm. the teacher comes to the house, if any. No one leaves the house. Uh, how, how old is your daughter? My daughter is only eight years old, yeah. and we discovered when she was about, about four. How did you know? Uh, how we discovered yeah. is that, um, you know, she's a lone kid. <coughs> she's the only oh, child. Oh, she's the only child, yeah. She, her name is Amani, but they nickname her Amani Princess because <laughs> I think she's so cute. <laughs> yes, uh, she she's is. so adorable. Yes, she's she is. such a, she's a, she's like me. She, she loves people. <laughs> she just loves people. Sometimes you saw, sometimes uh, yeah. if you see Amani coming to hug you, it's yeah. her language of saying, I like you. Oh. You know, and then she's not afraid. She's fearless like me. Of course, we are fearless yeah. influencers. <laughs> we say that in my church. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we discovered because she's a lone kid. Mm -hmm. And when, this time I had fully transitioned to stay, to live in Kenya. Yeah. Because for, for some time I was living both in America and here. Yeah. Uh, so what we realized is that uh, when you give her money, okay, on her own, mm. she used to be very, how do I say? Uh, can I say snobbish? Mm -hmm. And that's not our personality. She used to be like, she would avoid, you, you would find in our estate, we have very young families, you'll find when they are playing, she would either stick to herself, and that's not, usually that's, that's not us. We are very friendly, we are very, we are people's, You're so sure. many, many yeah. stories have been written, we are people, we are people's, Pe people's your, persons, your, yeah. or whatever the word is. People. We are people. We love people, yeah. generally, we just, and that's how I've built my, our networks globally, we yeah. just get along with people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that's one. And then because she was a lone kid, we decided before she was three years, mm -hmm. we decided let her go to crash uh, kindergarten near my house mm -hmm. so that she can have social interaction skills. Because we used to worry like, why does she keep to herself? Another thing was eye contact. Mm -hmm. If you've lived in America, you know, I know in Kenya it's not very common. Uh, I personally, if you, and I know I've written many articles, if, you, if I'm talking to you and you don't give eye contact, in other countries it's taken as offense, especially yeah. in America. Yeah. Um, but for her, you would be talking to her and she's like, what we say in Kenya, Lenga in you, like, mm. I'm talking to her money, but she's not looking at me. Mm. This was a bit, um, I, I, I actually did not take it as a very serious concern. Mm. But later on, I, disco I discovered from the doctor that it's actually one of the symptoms of autism. Another thing, of course, I am high energy, you can tell, you, yeah. I'm sure you can feel it. I, I, I love <laughs> yes, it. And I always joke with my Americans and my other global friends that uh, if I was born in America, luckily I was born in Kenya. I love it that I was born in Kenya, proudly Kenyan. But if I was born in America, I think they would have diagnosed me with uh, ADHD, attention, like I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm attention, the life of the... Attention de de deficit. Uh, not quite, and, and I think hyperness. hyperness. Hyperness, one of those things, yeah. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> so what I want to talk about is that people of the older generation or people that are not well traveled well exposed need to know that some of us living right now in this century mm -hmm. other than autism some of us have multi giftings and i'll give you an example i'm, I'm an author i'm a global mentor yeah. i'm a founder of uh, duta angels foundation mm -hmm. if every weekend when you see me on the weekend uh, when i have free time every week we impact an orphanage or uh, some kids that are in the slums that are neglected, most of them have no parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are able to impact them, and some of them have become great people. Some of them are entrepreneurs in town near uh, uh, Buckley's in Loiter Street. I have Ochola, who I've, I took out of the street. Ochola now is a businessman. Okay, this is a street kid who was smoking glue. Is it they smoke glue in the street? Yes. I found him in uh, Moy Primary. What I'm trying to say is that for those people who do not believe that someone can have multi giftings from God, forget about I, I, with all due respect, this is possible. And I think for the autistic kids, this you find that they have very many giftings. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, over the years, I've learned that someone like Steve Jobs had serious 
invisible disability and we suspect that it's a high functioning autism mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um, I know at some point you'll ask me autism is there a cause yeah. Um, yeah. we've been doing a lot of research I have been learning mm -hmm. in fact in our house I've become like the doctor because I Google I, I I, I studied things. There's even a program where I've had to do a course in America. It's called uh, Behavioral ABA. Mm -hmm. Advanced. It's like a technique where you just uh, help the baby to deal with her sensory integration. Yeah, because autism affects your sensory side of the brain and it's a uh, they say cognitive mm -hmm. i'm not a doctor this time please <laughs> forgive me the doctors in the room please mm -hmm. uh, watching us mm -hmm. uh, forgive us i might not be the guru of all these yeah. terms yeah. but the, the, the for money it's her brain that is affected mm -hmm. you know the way she thinks like sometimes i'm getting out of the car from upstairs and we are going down and i can see her looking at me i can see her body language telling me mommy you're too slow and i thought i was fast we don't have any medics in the house yeah. but um uh, they say that autism is a spectrum disorder, meaning there are many disorders put together. Okay? Yes, yes. So it's used to describe a group of neurodevelopmental conditions. Correct. Characterized by ch challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, yes. speech, and nonverbal communication. Yes. The doctors in the house can affirm to that. In fact, they say that according to World Health Organization, about one in a hundred children globally has autism so this is one of those issues that we need to talk and talk about but as uh, we were dis we were just discussing with my guest here people think that autism is a disease but it's actually just a disorder the only problem is because we do not have uh, the right environment to have uh, to raise autistic children adults because I'm also told that autism can catch up with you in your adulthood. It doesn't have to be something that is diagnosed <laughs> at that. like me. Yes, at <laughs> childhood. So what is it? And that is what we are discussing here with Maggie. What is it? What does it look like? What mm. does the uh, the procedure of diagnosis? What does it take? And maybe that is where I'm going to ask Maggie to come in. When their daughter was diagnosed, how long was that process? How tiring wow. was that procedure? Wow. How long? How how is it? What when you, uh, when you think about it, say you talked about people in Tulkana. Yes. Do you think they have the right information? Do they, do they have the right infrastructure? Do they have the resources to diagnose autism? Because I am told yes. that in certain parts of the world, children with autism are locked inside homes. Oh. Yes. Yes. So how was that process for you? Just getting to know that, you know, finally understanding what is happening to your daughter, embracing it, and then now moving forward in order to manage it. We'll talk about management, but cool. I, mm. Very good question, yeah. and I'm glad you brought it up because yes. I would have forgotten. Mm. Um, let me tell you something. I have lived in different countries, but I think there was nothing... If I, I don't actually talk about it because it might sound very negative, yeah. but today let's keep it real. Yeah, let's talk. Because let's another, talk. this could be something helping a mother in Turkana, exactly. in Isiolo, exactly. in uh, Mombasa, mm -hmm. because it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you for free that um, for us, our daughter first was misdiagnosed. And for that, I actually, until today, I have been very, I was very guilty for a long time. I had a very natural birth. Mm -hmm. I walked, I, I, I've never had surgery and I thank God, it's a blessing from yeah, God. Yeah. But during pregnancy, I don't remember anything I miss. But now, when Amani was three years, I went to fast track. Yeah. She had never had any challenges, you know, mental, any physical, even the way the baby cools. Mm -hmm. the, the developmental milestones were just, I had a tick, you know me, I'm a freak, a mm -hmm. detailed freak. Mm -hmm. So I had this, you know, the, the delivery room gives you, and the doctor gives you that, uh, you know, check. Mm -hmm. Has she missed a vaccine? None. Yeah. Has she, is she, you know, responding the when you come of, to... The bill of health, the, yeah. Thank yeah. you, mm -hmm. the bill of health. Yeah. At three years, um, when Amani has started having these behaviors, there was an extra behavior that parents can, this is a symptom that parents can observe. Mm. When we are watching TV in the house, mm. uh, certain things she would oh. block her ears. It's very unfortunate that Amani was misdiagnosed and Amani had surgery. And for this, and the, as a mother, if there's one thing that has haunted me as a mother, because I remember my spouse was not in the country, so I'm the one who signed those consent forms yeah, for to agree to have the baby have the immediate ear surgery so we go in and i i thought of seeking med you know other a second opinion myself i thought i was well traveled well exposed yeah. i signed for my baby to have middle ear surgery which if you ask me in my opinion she never needed it yeah. 
anyway, fast forward. So after the surgery, we go back for, um, you know, after you've had surgery, we never, we, we don't like hospitals. So she was fine. This is how God, I, I think when God says humble yourself like kids, Yani, this kid has surgery in the morning. In the evening, we were bouncing in my house. We actually never slept in the hospital. She recovered very well. Um, the following day now, after about three, six months, we had to go through the sensory, you know, her ear, yeah. because they were saying her eardrum, remember after the ear surgery, yeah. she went to theater, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Yeah. This I'll never forget. Yeah. I'll write a book at some point. Yeah. I can tell you it's the most painful. For me, I'm a professional and I'm well exposed. When I think about a mother, who is in Bungoma, hmm. or uh, who is in what is the driest part of this Garissa? Garissa and Mandera, when I think of my village, yeah. where yeah, most Kukana. people, even when we were growing up, when someone had like you know they say Mwendawazimu mm -hmm. in the village, mm -hmm. they would call him Mwendawazimu. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up mm -hmm. is uh, in English mm -hmm. is like a crazy person. Yeah. Uh, it's when I also come to discover that wow. So for autistic kids, they could also be. Um, Coded or labeled. Listen, coded. Mm. If the parents was not aware or was not following up, like I'm very vocal about mm. it, mm. and by the way, I'm very heavily involved, even in her school, mm. everywhere. I think even in church, you see me saying, "Guys, you have to be inclusive of my child," mm. because it's not wendawazimu, it's an autism, it's a, it's a, it's a disorder. So when we were diagnosed after the surgery, during the therapy, I also got to see. Um, it's like when you're hungry. When you're hungry, you see all the McDonald's on this road, the KFC, the, the, the food joints, the, the Kibandas. It's what happened to me. So when I was going through therapies in the morning there, I would notice all the parents of autistic kids because mm -hmm. autistic kids, uh, once you're a parent of an autistic kid, you realize that the, when kids are hyper, you can almost pick it. When a baby is not giving eye, you can almost pick it. Mm -hmm. So I got to interact with so many parents and they would tell me the exact same thing. I'll never forget, there's even, I don't know if you guys know about ce CP, cerebral palsy. palsy yeah. the, there are kids who also have uh, some dysfunctioning, like yeah. a bone. Some is, limbs are not working. Yeah, some mm. limbs are not functioning. Mm. It's, it's a form of physical disability. Mm. Mm. I would see those parents and I'll never forget this lady who used to come. There were like two sisters, I could tell they resemble each other. Mm. And they were in that therapy every morning. And myself, I used to wonder. Why wouldn't the doctor, why, you know, because you're going for this therapist, there's no improvement. All I needed was somebody to tell me that your daughter has a spectrum called autism uh, spectrum disorder. And all they needed to tell me is that, um, you know, that you follow a certain diet, yeah. which has been a miracle for us. Mm -hmm. When I tell you I become the doctor in the house, mm -hmm. Uh, so Amani, for her, the intervention, so for autism, there's no cure. Yeah. You cannot take like a medicine yeah. or like, you know, for cancer patients, yeah. usually they take like maybe some, what is it called? The, the those sessions, the, the chemo, yeah, the, the chemo there's nothing the, like the that for autism. Yeah. After three months of this therapy, speech therapy, yeah. you remember Amani at this time, yeah. three years old, she, she should be she, speaking. She wasn't speaking. She wasn't speaking. The only thing she could call was ma, ma, that's it. Um, but when I come home, she would respond. And sometimes I come home downstairs and Amani is just laying going, Ayani, she's in that corner. Now, I think the spectrum was catching up with her uh, because when she was younger, when you come home, she would cool and she would respond like, hold me, you know, little kids, like yeah. she would respond like wanting to reach out to you. But this time she would just linger you. Mm. Parents who have kids with this special diagnostics, it is very easy to lose your, uh, to I, actually go into mental depression. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thank God for strength and also I've been surrounded by destiny shapers. Mm -hmm. Even the, Dr. Salma, I was referred by another uh, parent mm -hmm. who has gone through hell herself. Her kid is probably now 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I go there and Dr. Salma, as we enter the room, we had to book an appointment. As we enter the room, she, you know, Amani and I, very cute, she walks in <laughs> and I walk in. And then she look at me, she's a sweetheart and God bless such doctors yeah. who are doing it right yeah. and doing the right thing, mm. not misdiagnosing our kids because mm. that's a bare minimum you need. Mm. So Dr. Salma, as we are sitting, she, you know, I'm giving her the history of the kid. I'm giving her the birth, um, you know, the records. And she walk, looks at me and tells, ma'am, uh, at the time she didn't know me. She looks at me in the eye and says, ma'am, uh, your kid seems to have, uh, you know, uh, has she ever been diagnosed with autism? autism yeah. And this was the 
what do we, what do we call it? Redemption. Mm. You know, like when you're rebellated. Yeah. It's like, for me, it was the biggest thing. And this like is all I big, needed. Big weight lifted. It was off a big your, yes, yeah. because I needed to know what is it. What's wrong with my child? Her ear has been cut. She's, oh, she's gone through the biggest Saturday. operation, and I'm not seeing any improvement. So anyway, she recommends. Uh, she she did not do much. Mm. She just watched the baby for like five five minutes, mm. and already, she didn't even because autism. These are the spectrum uh, symptoms. The symptoms are very clear. Yeah. She recommended oh. me diet. Okay. And let me tell you, my dear, mm. this has been the other biggest win for us. Mm. Amani now is eight years old. Mm. Amani at four could not read. Mm. Underline that. Mm. Read. Amani could not read. Amani, when you speak to her, in fact, I think she was going down, 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 yeah, down yeah. the she drain. She was sinking deeper. Her, she was sinking deeper in mm. her autism. Mm. Amani could not write. Can we start with that? Yeah. Could not write her name. Amani could not say my name. Amani could not, she, she you know, speak. because also I feel that even as parents, we were confused and her now, we were even confusing her more because <laughs> we are going for these therapies. She's and learning so many things. Yeah. Well, we'd like to take a short break, a very, very short break. Uh, today we've been joined by this amazing, phenomenal woman called Margaret Kimani. She is an autism champion, very passionate, as you can tell. And of course, we are actually talking from a very familiar point as she is mom to an 80 year old autistic beautiful daughter don't move away we just want to step away for a few minutes pay some bills and we will be right back Welcome back to Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Thank you for joining us for this special episode where we are talking about autism. Remember, the month of April is all about awareness creation around this issue, this order that actually affects one in a hundred children, children worldwide. This is, these are statistics that have been given out by World Health Organization. And joining me on this episode is an autism champion, one of the many champions in this country. She is none other than Margaret Kimani. She is also an investment banking consultant and an acclaimed author, also a very passionate uh, gender and inclusion champion. We have so much to talk about. Keep it here. Uh, remember, we are available at KTN Home on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. You can also hit us up hit me up directly i'm available as quintan bori on facebook instagram as well as twitter let me go back to the diet mm. the diet for autism is a huge deal mm. apparently and i know the doctors please correct us we i know it's uh, it's still being researched yeah, exactly. they say that for autistic kids certain foods trigger that's the word they use yeah. trigger mm. certain behaviors mm even the sensory. Mm. And for money, she had to be out of uh, red meat, mm. for example. Uh, we, she drinks rice milk, which comes from London. I'm actually this year, cheers to me, that now that I'm uh, completely out of a nine to five job. Uh, this year, I think I told you that I've left SBM. Yeah, uh, I'm doing full-time investment banking, so I work from home. This is also how you're able to interview me yeah. because before you would not would find, not find me, I would be, I, I love, let me tell you, God works in a, in a miraculous way because now that I'm doing full-time investment banking, I have such a schedule, I'm able even to be more present for, for money, money because mm. nine to five, you drive two hours traffic, you cool, come back, yeah. you're as tired yeah. as hell. I, I love it, working from home, mm. I can pick up from school. I actually do her, you know, her sister with homework. Um, I did not tell you that she has started coding. Amani yeah, will be a yeah. coder in wow. a year's time. We, nice. uh, we look out for this space. <laughs> anyway, so the new space I am in. So last year, uh, I was telling you how for her, the diet has been mm. a very big deal. Mm. But so rice milk has worked for her. Mm. Uh, they call it casein and gluten free. Mm. Gluten is wheat. Mm. I'm, I'm, let me tell you, I've also gone back you to become, kindergarten. You, you become a nutritionist. I'm telling you, yeah. a nutritionist or kindergarten for nutrition. Mm -hmm for me in my house. <laughs> I had to learn what is gluten. Remember, med medical terms do not actually flow. Even when I lived in Boston, I, I don't know these medical terms. But um, gluten is uh, wheat. Mm. So anything chapati, anything uh, bread, Sp anything, spaghetti. of course, when she was a young baby, Weetabix was her thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Weetabix yeah. is a lot of a lot wheat. Of wheat yes. So she had to be out of that. And I can tell you in summary that the diet has worked miracles for us. 
miracles. Mm -hmm. And I know many parents watching, if your kid probably, you can always reach out to me, please. And it doesn't matter whether you're in Baringo or Bungoma or uh, Muranga or Machakos. Please reach out to me. I will leave my contacts. I have become a friend of many parents. Mm -hmm. uh, some just get my number and they chat me on WhatsApp and I call. In Amani school right now, there's a kid with, we don't know whether it's autism or it's a bit of CP, yeah. uh, cerebral palsy. Yeah. For her, you can visit, it's very visible. Because yeah. for certain conditions, um, for certain invisible conditions, they are very visible. I mean, for certain, should I say mental uh, disorders? Disorders, yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the right medical term, but please, the medics don't kill us. We are not <laughs> doctors. Um, for certain conditions that are invisible, yeah. Uh, you find that for some of the kids you could almost tell, I think even in church you see some kids, uh, you could almost yeah. tell that they have this, some yeah, disability this, but yeah. you can't tell. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I've had, I've become friends of, as much as I'm not a medic, at the very bare minimum I can tell a parent, go follow this diet, this has worked, go try this it. This is this doctor. Go try Let me it. ask you, yeah. do you have like a community of uh, moms and dads? who have children with autism, yes. when, where, where is that community? Uh, we do have though, I, 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 I should be honestly, uh, to be honest, it's not very structured. Oh, okay. uh, it's just I know people like I know, us. I know there is Autism Jackie, Society of Kenya. Yes, yeah. uh, there's Autism Society, Society of, of Kenya. Kenya yeah. And actually, I did not mm. tell you, big mm. shout out to a lady called Felicitas. Yeah. I was actually introduced to her by her daughter who lives in California. Mm. This lady had to move. To California, no California, or is it California or Carolina? Mm. One of those because of her son. Oh. Her son now is an adult. I was introduced to her because the mother, because of her daughter's son's, her grandson's condition, mm -hmm. she had to start Autism Society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's along the road mm -hmm. near Safari Park, mm -hmm. and this lady is the one who taught me diet. So I have so many. When I talk about Destiny Shapers, I've heard so many so of these. And I also want to be a source of, you know, a source of hope for a parent. Mm -hmm. Felicity is the one who, she, there's a book she sells, very cheap. Um, and this is how I learned to make, how do you make chicken? Mm -hmm. How do you make chicken without the skin? Oh my God, story of our life. <laughs> how do you give the baby some, uh, you know, how do you give heavily on the, because the baby has to eat a lot of cereals. Yeah. Remember, red meat is an no ogre zone for us. Yeah. We eat a lot of fish, white meat. But even the white meat chicken, you must do it without the skin because the skin has some stuff. Also, for example, um, in our house, some juices cannot work. Mm. Sodas, mm. sugar. Mm. Sugar is a no-go zone now for our money. But now what has happened, I thank God, this is a miracle on its own. And for those people who have stood with us mm. personally, because I'm the only one in the country with the Amani. Mm. For the people, my siblings who have had to stomach, my own father, my mom has passed on, mm. uh, my own father who, you know, who've encouraged me. A sh big shout out to all of you guys. So uh, Felicity, for example, taught me the diet. She is a booklet she has. So I also want to stand and, and be a source of, uh, you know, um, help yeah. to other parents Refuge who qualified. don't know. Exactly. Uh, and I think you asked me a specific yeah. question about mm. uh, is there a community? Mm. Uh, there are many communities, but they are not, I would say, structured. Uh, but the one I like is the one in my church, uh, Jackie Mataga. I think you know her. Yeah. Her son has, uh, aut is it autism? Mm. I'm not quite sure, but yeah. I think a bit of autism. Mm. Other. Mm. Uh, that is one community. We call it Through the Roof. Mm. We do have a WhatsApp group, oh. and that's about it. Mm. So, what we used to do before uh, COVID, uh, and I want to celebrate these are unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. Jackie had to start this movement, uh, and there are many others. I have a small group of mothers who, mothers and fathers, uh, who we just um, sometimes we do, um, we do have friends. One of my best friends, Wanja, has her daughter, she li still lives in Boston. Mm. Uh, Gigi was diagnosed with uh, autism, but she, right now she's a genius in school and you cannot tell. So we have a small group where we, we call it parents of special, special, no, we call them precious kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we do is once in a while when Wanja, for example, she's a mother of a kid who has survived autism and is thriving in school. Mm -hmm. uh, her daughter is now thriving in school mm -hmm. in Boston and of course she's proudly Kenyan. She comes here very often. Uh, so sometimes we just organize a get together. Whenever Wanja is coming, we we I, I host them in my house, and uh, usually they can ask all the 
what we call blonde questions, you know? <laughs> you can and no judgment. Yeah. Because let me tell you, autism no. is such a hard thing. Yeah, no one, no because one has all the answers. Because it's not diagnosed properly. Yeah. They're still researching the thing. Yeah. And you just have to like, uh, can we call it uh, experiment? You fumble about. Yeah. Do, do you think, Maggie, there's enough information? If, no. If, if you were to face the Ministry of Health in Kenya today, what would you tell them? No, yeah. no. I would tell you for free. Yeah. Um, and that's why I've been at the forefront of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not alone. There's also another friend, let me mention, Andy Speaks, a very good, uh, beautiful friend of mine called Sylvia Macha. Much, I can never say her last name. <laughs> Sylvia runs her two sons. Mm -hmm. for, for her, what she does is uh, we've been trying to lobby certain schools mm -hmm. to have a center for autism, autistic kids. Uh, because remember at the beginning you asked me, uh, in certain parts of this country, yeah. children are locked up. Children. And I told you, gave you the example of even very posh estates in Nairobi mm. where kids are locked. It's not like, and, and by the way, guys, I'm not saying this to, to be judgmental or appear judgmental or like a superhero. No, parents lock their kids because they realize, and I'll tell you something, even in our group, in our smaller groups, even Jackie Madagas yeah. through the roof yeah. group, I'll tell you for free that the reason parents lock their kids is not because you want to lock the kid, it's because between Amani going to jump and going to grab the pastor's mic, which she believes it's her mic, mm -hmm. in her brain, mm -hmm. she knows every mic is mine. Mm -hmm. And also, between the disruptions that you get with that kid, also safety, let me tell you something. Kids with autism, regardless, like Amani is very high functioning, they are the lower functioning that do not even understand safety. I don't judge parents. Uh, of course, for me, I'm trying, even in our village, uh, there's something we'll be doing to just walk around and look for these kids who are locked or talk to the parents so that they don't lock them. And you see why we have to partner with the Ministry of Education. Sylvia, and why I respect Sylvia, and it speaks. Uh, you know, we are champions for autism. Why? Because we know what it, it is to, ha to be a mother. To be a mother, leave so, alone yeah. father. To yeah, be a mother of an autistic, autistic kid child. is another PhD on its own. It's a lot of work, a lot of resources. But why I don't judge these parents is because the amount of things you go through between the safety of the child, yeah. your own safety, yes. and your own, your own sanity. sanity. Um, yeah. So that's why we are telling Ministry of Education, it is not a favor. We are not, we are not asking, uh, I think this is a demand we must advocate mm -hmm. for schools to have centers mm -hmm. of such kids. And you know, another thing, and I salute, I want to actually be, give a big shout out to the current CEO mm. of National Council Living with uh, Kasa, living. National NCPWD. NCPD, yeah. Yeah. The new, because he's also a person living with disability. Yeah. I think you know him, yeah. he, he has a disability. Yeah. Why I salute him is because he's really trying. He's really trying and we are supporting him. I keep telling him, we are your KYM, we are your people on the ground. <laughs> Whatever you need done, tell us. Tell us. Uh, and why I salute him is because right now we are asking schools to be to integrate our, our yeah, kids. Uh, of course, you find that uh, for certain kids who have a physical disability, not just uh, kids with uh, autism, mm -hmm. but kids with also living with physical disability, because if you do not include them, I can guarantee you 100% they'll be locked. Because going to a special school, let me give you another now serious challenge about autism. If a money, uh, there's a symptom, one of the other symptoms, I, I know we'll never finish these mm -hmm. symptoms, mm -hmm. but what I noticed for my, our daughter is that she's a genius in coping. Uh, I've studied something they call echolalia. Mm -hmm. So the money sometimes, initially now she's getting better, but when you ask her, how are you? I'm sure she'll tell you, how are you? Mm -hmm. It's called echolalia. Oh, it's like a repetition. Oh, repetition. Yes. yes. They, and even that's why in America, when you go to certain places, if you see an autistic kid, uh, you, you see them rocking, rocking. Yeah, yeah. They rock. Mm. You know, if it's a kid who is cleaning, mm. they'll just clean, clean one clean, spot. Yeah. Clean, clean mm. one spot. Mm. They have obsession of, uh, I think it's like a condition. Mm. But now, for Amani, if you took her to a special school, this is why Amani has never gone to a special school. And I thank God. Because if she, her condition is high, high she's uh, high functioning. Mm. But for certain kids who have autism, lower functioning autism, they must go to a special school. But now the danger of taking a money to uh, a special, special school, school yeah. is her echolalia. If she finds a kid rocking from will, Monday to yeah, morning she, to evening, she will, she will copy exactly to the point. So, and, and you see, this is a genius that the schools must tap into. 
because you see for money if like now she started coding uh, i was very paranoid now for coding when you teach a money how to code she will perfect that act you see the copying uh, disorder is actually a strength for her true yeah and even if you look at richard branson's and all these other people who have autism mm. they have also they have used it mm. instead of taking it as a weakness yeah they have actually it. They're taking Not advantage it. of it. Maggie, you know, um, yeah. we're, we're about to finish. Yeah, it's okay. Um... Honestly, when the picture that you've painted is is is, is not very interesting. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and, and uh, now I'm just thinking as a parent. Yes. Assuming that someone is watching from whichever part of the country. Yes. And maybe they've noticed that their child is going through that. It's not very interesting. It's I mean, not. Every, I believe every parent has the best you know, um, ideas, dreams for their children. Thank you, thank exactly. you. Exactly. So do I. Yeah. Yes. So um, It was very hard. Mm. I think the, the hardest thing for uh, parents, uh, maybe if you can allow me, the yeah. hardest thing for parents is actually accept. Acceptance. Acceptance. Mm. It's like uh, right now, um, you know, rest in peace, the muse kibaki. Yeah. It's like death. Mm. Many of us, when you lose a loved one, it's, it's similar to yeah. death. Can I shock you? Yes. It's similar to the death experience. Oh. Most of us, we hardly, it takes a long yeah. time to accept. For me, maybe it took like two years mm -hmm. to accept. Mm -hmm. You know, secondly, there's a confusion of like, wait, this kid was born normal. Mm. I don't remember anything. Yeah. Wait, this kid, I followed all the things yeah. that the gyno, um, is it gyno? The gynecologist yeah. told me yeah. to do. Yeah. Then, let me tell you now even harder in kenyan society there's a stigma is why we wear these things and and i think the the i thank god for whoever came because i cannot brag about coming up with the autism awareness month mm. this autism awareness month is globally uh, someone yeah, started it but the hero who started the autism awareness month is because the stigma is real and in the kenyan african settings uh, let me give you an example of my family yeah on my family side, um, we never, you know what they say when they because mm. that's what people code it, mm. uh, that's how people code it. Mm. We've never heard this, mm. never, in my family line, no, in my family no, tree. No, there's no, None. Never, never happened. On my uh, uh, your, spouse's your, your in side, yes. yes, my in-laws, mm. yes, we see that tendency, oh. it's there. I know a few uncles who oh. have had, but you know, you can't tell. True. We don't know if those uncles were living with a mental, oh, okay. you know, okay. or it's a mental, you know, like a mental health. Yeah. Or we, I wouldn't know. Mm. From from the but research, you can imagine from the the research that you've done, yeah, from the research you've done, uh, because obviously I know you've done a lot of research. Yes, a yeah. lot. What do they say about the cause of what is what is what is it? They, Where does they it come say from? it could be uh, the conditions, mm. um, you know, the conditions around when you are pregnant. Mm. They say it could have an effect. Mm. Others say it could. I wouldn't lean on the inheritance, yeah. but they say sometimes it could be inherited, genetic. Mm -hmm. but mm. or genetical, mm. but there's no evidence. There's That's no what evidence. they say. Mm. They they politely, even if you Google, I'm sure other doctors can tell us. Mm. But they say the conditions. It's not known yet. It is uh, a mystery. For it now. is a mystery. But we can now. manage it. But let me tell you, parents, mm. there's hope. There's hope. Uh, one of my, actually, we are celebrating one of our colleagues. We have ABA. Mm. It's I'm forgetting the full name. It's advanced uh, behavioral something i'm forgetting forgive me but mm. I, I can tell you the meaning later yeah. aba is a technique mm. wanja mm. wanja big shout out to my friend wanja mm. bromberg mm. uh her hubby is called bromberg is mm. american mm. uh the technology they use mm. in fact wanja is also our uh, a clinician mm. she they use this technique in other countries i know america is big on it north america to be precise mm. Uh, ABA is a technique where, remember, for autism is usually the behavior is what you see. Yeah. You don't get to know what the mentor is yeah. going mm. through for like for money, mm. but what you see is the behavior. Mm. For example, if a money is irritated, sensory integration, she'll do, or she'll scream. Okay, once in a while, but hardly. Mm. For other kids, when you see them in the mall, the lower functioning, yeah. they, they're screaming their lungs out. Others, they just run. Others, they... they you know, they could even be hit by a car. Mm -hmm. Others, you see them having a meltdown in the sh floor shop yeah, because yeah. they just want a chocolate. Yeah. What you see is behavior. Yeah. So there's this technique called ABA. Yeah. And uh, for most parents, uh, I'm telling you, there are people who are actually doing this course online. But for most parents, I want to encourage you, once you figure the diet thing, once you also advocate, please, this one we are not requesting politely. Mm -hmm. We are asking and demanding that all the kids, I, my foundation actually, uh, so many years I started my foundation and our hashtag, 
our tagline is no child should be left behind. The reason I support these kids in the orphans, these very talented orphans in Dandora, in Mukuru Kwanjenga, is because no child. No child. You see, Amani, well, you see, when Amani yeah. was born, mm. she did not have a choice. No. I also did not, mm. we did not have the, the choice to pick the kid with autism yeah. or the Maggie <laughs> yeah. who is no more. Yeah. Uh, no child, honestly, should be, to be honest, mm. should be left, should be behind. left behind. And this is why we are demanding the schools, the hospitals, hey, churches. Mm. I've, had, I've had very many conversations <laughs> with churches. Uh, uh, let me not tell you my story of churches because I remember the first time when I rock, when I walked to church mm. and Amani, you actually, after one hour, Amani, her attention has left. Mm -hmm, yeah. And even in Sunday school, you might see her running around. She's bored. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, she's mm -hmm. bored. Thank God now she's a worshiper. She worships mm -hmm. and she sings in the choir. And I volunteer a lot in, at the UN Women. We believe that there are seven principles that must be followed. And one of them is equality, diversity and diversity mm -hmm. and, and equality. Yeah. And inclusion, mm -hmm. not tokenism. Mm -hmm. um, people living with disability, and especially the invisible ones, the ones you don't see, they don't need favor. Mm -hmm. They just need reasonable, globally we say reasonable accommodation. For example, this chair. Yeah. Now, you and I are wearing our, yeah. our favorite heel. <laughs> yeah. But guess what? If this was a person with a wheelchair, yeah. would we not lower the chair? We have to lower it's, the it's, chair. What we are saying is, uh, we are demanding reasonable accommodation. Reasonable accommodation. Yes. Maggie, I have to cut you short. No problem. We need part two, right? Yes, we need. <laughs> <laughs> we need, of course we need part two. We need yeah. to talk about your yeah. book, which is called Unleash the, Unleash the, the Leadership, Leadership Giant in, 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 in you. you. In case somebody wants to reach out to Maggie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so allow me please yeah. to, um, because I said I'm a resource, other mm. than advocating for, you know, community, workplaces, inclusion, allow me to please uh, offer my contacts yeah. to any mom. Don't give up. There, there's help. help. Help is available. I'm one of those resources. And many other people, sweethearts like, uh, you know, Grace, the producer, queen. herself, <laughs> queen herself, uh, queen herself, uh, you got that, yeah. queen herself, and there are many other resources. Yeah. Reach out, um, uh, we thank God COVID is, you know, at least the, the economy has opened up. Yeah. For mothers, they want this. Yeah. For mothers and parents, they want this because it's therapy. Mm. Uh, dialogue is always, I always say, dialogue it, it, is therapy. Don't yeah. hold it, on. To, don't let it kill you, man. Mm. Uh, because the kid needs you. Mm. Your child needs you. Mm. So at the very bare minimum, have this dialogue. Open up. Don't lock your kids in, the, uh, in your houses. There is help. Even myself, I've hosted many parents who are coming for medical help in Nairobi. And I don't charge for it. Mm. It's it's my way of serving. Serving actually, so, the, yeah. what they say is a problem half shared. Yeah, is actually have, solved. Have solved. Yeah. So in case you need to get in touch with Maggie, uh, her number is uh, will be available on the scroll. Yes. Just get in touch with her, and then we'll be able to see how to tackle this problem together. Now, from us here at KT and Home, we just want to say Asante for keeping it here. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for the comments. And of course, thank you for being here with us every Saturday from 4 p.m. Without much ado, allow me to end there. See you again next week, same time. My name is Quinton Bori. We've been here with Margaret Kimani, and this has been Her Standards. Bye for now.